You know, I was uh, coming of age in my early 20s in the early and mid 80s. And, you know, that's when the world first, you know, started learning about and hearing about AIDS and HIV. And of course, when the hysteria, you know, took, o took hold, uh, you talk about the stigma of, of HIV. We've, we've certainly come a great, great long way in terms of treatment uh, for HIV. But um, what can you tell us about sort of the state of, of HIV today, whether, you know, referring to Philadelphia or Pennsylvania or however, you know, you can give us some sense of the scope of this problem today? So the good news is treatment is at a level that we would have never anticipated. When I started at the AIDS Law Project in the early 90s, when I was just a child, <laughs> uh, we never thought that we would see our clients well, returning to work, planning for their futures. But isn't that wonderful? That's the medical reality. That's the scientific reality. What we thought we wouldn't see anymore is stigma. And we still see that. We still get three to five calls a week at our office that somebody has been treated differently simply because they have a virus. You know, disease is random. And so if you have this virus, we have seen people excluded from all types of things. They lose their job. They're denied health care. The neighbor's kids won't play with my kids. This happens all the time. And I would like to say that, you know, we're better and smarter in Philadelphia. Not so much. I mean, we see it. We mm -hmm. still you know, yeah. see it throughout the state, but, but we still see that. And remarkably, the area of kind of social interchange where we see discrimination the most is in healthcare. So if you think about it, these are the folks who we trust to know how to provide care. That's the area where we see the largest amount of discrimination. We did a review of our files last year of cases over the last 10 years, um, discrimination cases, and 75% were in the healthcare arena. That is really surprising, I have to say. So